Back in Champaign, Illinois, number four, Penn State, visiting the Fighting Illini of Illinois and the premier volleyball student section in the nation, the Spike Squad. They're fired up and ready to go for this matchup in the Big Ten Conference. Let's take a look at the starting lineups tonight. They're brought to you by Tachikara, and we look at these Penn State Nittany Lions, McClendon, Courtney, Slay, Grant, Scott, and Hancock the libero will be Dominique Gonzalez. Pretty typical lineup for Penn State as we've seen throughout this year. Fighting Illini, a lineup they have mixed and moved around a bit throughout this season as we take a look at the starters for the Fighting Illini, this home team looking to pull off an upset. Burks had a, a very strong weekend this past weekend. Criswell, Mayers, Dorn, McMahon, Valunas, and the libero, Jennifer Beltran for the Fighting Illini. Illinois coming off a victory against Indiana last weekend. They split between Indiana and Purdue, but feeling a lot more confident, always confident when they have this student section behind them. The Spike squad always gets into the heads of the opponents who come into Huff Hall. The head coach for the Fighting Illini is Kevin Hambly in his fifth season. Of course, led this Illinois team to their first national title appearance in 2011 when they reached the national title match. Hoping to get his team back to the postseason this year. And the head coach for the Nittany Lions is Russ Rose, 13-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, 15 Big Ten titles for him, and a number of other accolades. You could go on all night about the accolades for Russ Rose. He's more focused on his team, though. We look at the series history between these two. We mentioned Illinois has had a team, is a team that has had Penn State's number over the past few years, winning three of the last six. These two teams have split, as you mentioned, Audrey, and some great ones during that span. Five setters here in Huff Hall and then also in University Park, PA. Illinois ending a number of Penn State streaks that were part of those four consecutive national championships. And you can see both coaches there shaking hands. They are good friends. and. You see the veteran Russ, Russ Rose and the youthful Kevin Hambly. Take a look at some of the keys for this Penn State team. Audrey, what do you have? Well, the keys, yes, for Penn State. Right now, they need to make sure that they take control of unforced errors. They've been um, a little bit laxed in that area, and they have to play aggressively when they walk onto an opposing team's home court play aggressively from start to finish. And the keys for the Illini. Well, for Illinois, you've got to be aggressive on the serve because Penn State has so many weapons. Even when you get them out of system, they're hard to defend. Illinois would also like to extend the rallies and make this an interesting match. You want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this big Penn State team. One change in the starters for Penn State. Ayanna Whitney getting a start for the Nittany Lions. Whitney, the redshirt sophomore out of New Jersey. This road environment, always tough to go on the road in the Big Ten. We'll see how Penn State handles it. Micah Hancock back to serve to start the match. Into the net on the service air. That's not the way you want to get things going for any team in the Big Ten. Well, we talk about unforced errors, and that is an unforced error right there. You want to make sure that you get your first serve in. You know, it's all or nothing with her serve. We've seen her serve a ton of aces. And we've also seen her be high air as well. Be Beltran to serve for the Illini. Katie Slay with the tip, and the Big Ten Player of the Week keeps it going to start off this match. A little tip sometimes scores, but it's interesting, and I'm keeping track of who Illinois is serving the ball to. He served it to uh, the left side attacker, Megan Courtney, and so I think she'll get her share of serves tonight. Here's Liz McMahon on the right side. Gonzalez with the up for Penn State. Burks into the Penn State block. The Illini get it over the net. And Scott puts it down for the Nittany Lions. Well, you see two sets going to Scott. She is an incredible right side attacker. We're going to be calling her name a lot. For Illinois, they have smaller blockers on her. Illinois' left sides aren't huge. So it's going to be interesting to see how the backcourt defends against Scott's attacks. Out of system are the Illini. Burks with the swing. Another chance for Scott. Touch call. 
Scott elevates so nicely. She's got great athletic ability. And so she's able to hit the tops of the blocker's hands. She's also able to hit open shots if they're available. So already two kills for her. The 2012 Big Ten Player of the Year off to another good start in Big Ten play. Gonzalez will set it over to Scott. And a good up by Valunas. And McMahon off the block. And so we're seeing a right side battle here. We're going to look at McMahon's attack. Just going off of Katie Slay's hands. That's actually not a bad block. She slowed the ball down. You know, as a blocker, you do want to get stuff blocks, but slowing an attack down is just as good. You want to transition out of that and try and get a point. Too much from Megan Courtney, the sophomore, and an air on Penn State tied at three in the first. And they are attacking her on serve-receive. You're going to see the ball going to her a lot. So they're going to try and get her busy and thinking about the pass and not allowing her to get a good approach on the outside. Now he's starting to serve for the Illini. Slay in the middle, but she does not keep it in play. Now this is what has been plaguing Penn State. Back-to-back -back errors, unforced errors. Two hitting errors right now from Penn State is not traditionally what we've seen from Penn State Volleyball. This time no air for Slay as she gets the kill. You mentioned the errors and Russ Rose had said this week that you know, players think it's okay to have a couple of errors in each set, but when the, a number of different players add up those errors, it's too many points to give away. Well, absolutely. And, you know, you can't play perfect volleyball. There's no such thing. You're going to have your share of errors, but it's a good error versus a bad error. And a hitting error out of bounds, um, you know, when you're not going after hands is just silly. Maddie Mayers, the freshman for the Illini, gets started well. Mayers running a slide behind the setter. Let's take a look at it again. Pass is great. It allows her to run that slide. You see her one-on-one -on -one versus Megan Courtney, and she's able to score. Maddie Mayers, an up-and-down Big Ten start, according to Coach Kevin Hambly. Some nights she's been phenomenal, others she's disappeared. They need her to be consistent. And that's right, and that's freshman for you right there. You never know what you're going to get from her. Go back to the freshman. One-handed attempt at a set, does not get it to Whitney, and the point to the Illini. So the ball was passed a little tight. Hancock trying to do the best she can with it. Pushed it a little bit too high. Again, another unforced error for Penn State. Here is Ayanna Whitney off the block in the middle. And I think what Ayanna Whitney brings to the floor is a little bit more of an offense. Mia Grant does okay, but we really didn't see huge numbers from her. So it's nice to see somebody else getting the nod in there. We'll see how she performs tonight for Penn State. Ayanna Whitney redshirted a year ago, and there is the kill for Morgan Criswell as she goes off the head of a Penn State player. Well, Illinois needs all the players to play well, and Chriswell certainly has to factor into that as a left side hitter. See a great shot going high off the blocker's hands and way out of bounds on the end line. Chriswell had 15 kills at Purdue last week, eight in the first set alone. There's a kill for the center of Penn State, Micah Hancock. Well, Hancock's front row, she's a lefty. And so when she's there, the blocking team for Illinois needs to be tracking her as she will attack. We saw her tip there. She's also outstanding with a swing as well. Chris Will again, big opening in the floor to work with. Now that's a serious shot. If she can consistently do that tonight, boy, she'll be a handful. And take a look how Penn State takes more of a line away from her. She sees the block and drills it cross court. Service air gives one back as Valunas into the net. 8-7 in the first set. Illini on top at home. The Illinois 3-3 three three in the Big Ten Conference, 7-9 overall. Penn State 14-2 and 5-1 and and in Big Ten play nearing the midpoint of the Big Ten season, and the ace for the Nittany Lions and Dominique Gonzalez. Now she's got a nice 
deep, flat serve. She's all the way back. Take a look at how far she is from the end line. So when she releases that ball, there's a lot of float to it, and it moves right before it gets to the passer's hands. See the numbers on Penn State in their service aces. Here's McMahon on the left side this time. She catches the back line. So in that rotation on serve receive, she's left front. She'll swing from the left side. And again, at 6'6", she's going to hit really high and deep into the corner. McMahon started the season on the left side, moved to the right because the Illini felt like they needed more balance. Just were not getting the offense on the right side that they needed. Joust at the net is won by Hancock, but ball still in play. Finally falls and the Illini are feeling it here in the first. <laughs> they are feeling it for sure. Home crowd is behind them. 10-8 lead for Illinois. And Liz McMahon, a junior for this Illinois team. Three kills already. And a receiving air on Penn State, the ace to Illinois. Illinois doing a good job from the service line. Their targets are Deja McClendon and Megan Courtney. Deja has improved a lot over the years in her passing game, but she is still, still susceptible to these float serves that are coming her way. Davis with that ace, and here is McClendon answering back for Penn State. Now, I have always had the utmost respect for Deja McClendon. Not only is she a great player, but when you talk to her, she is a great person. Really sweet kid. Um, and when I say sweet, I don't mean, you know, sweet where she's not competitive. She's got fire in her. And what a great career she has had here at Penn State. Far too much on that serve from Hancock. And just one service ace last weekend. And getting to that moment where it's been a few in a row, she hasn't been able to find the serve. Hancock second in the nation in aces at this point in the season. 41 total. And in on the right side. Mayer's going for the back corner and gets it. Well, Illinois seems to just be outworking Penn State on these scrappy plays. They find open holes in the deep court. There's a nice swing by McClendon, but defensively, I, th I think defense is an attitude. And right now, Illinois has come out with the attitude that they are going to go all out in the back court to try and beat Penn State. Jennifer Beltran moving to the opposite side to serve, but a side out for Penn State. It's so hard to stop Katie Slay because she hits over top of the block and she hits different angles. So even though it's a typical one ball, you just don't know where it's going. We call that, you know, when a hitter has a lot of range to their shot. So Katie Slay getting one balls and scoring every time. There's Burks from the 10 foot line, too strong, but the touch will be called and the point to Illinois. Penn State can't believe that there was a touch call on that. They thought for sure it was their point. Illinois coming in more confident this week than they have been in the past in the Big Ten. Kevin Hambly saying his team is showing the fight. Won two of the last three after struggling to start Big Ten play. The chance for Scott. Davis is there. And Burks off the block. You know, the key is that transition dig, though. You get your arms under the ball, and you're able to transition and score. The Illini on top at home in set number one. The crowd loves it, 15 to 10 lead. For all the latest news, insight, and information on Big Ten Volleyball, follow BTN Volleyball on Twitter today, twitter.com slash BTN Volleyball. And you can use a hashtag that you will see in a moment in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Hashtag B1G Volleyball. As we take a look at the question from Twitter tonight, and it is who is the best outside hitter, excuse me, best rivalries in the Big Ten? As we look at the rivalry between Penn State and Illinois, give us your thoughts on the best rivalry in Big Ten women's volleyball. Use that hashtag B1G Volleyball. And let us know who you think is the best rivalry in the Big Ten Conference. Thoughts could be Illinois, Penn State, Penn sure. State, Nebraska. A lot of options out there. Absolutely. 15 to 10 lead. Courtney for Penn State does not get that ball to go. Burks with the roll shot over. Another chance for Courtney to dig by Stark.
Mayers behind the setter. Long pass for Hancock. Free ball chance for the Illini. And Burks ends the rally. All right, well, what's impressing me is Illinois' defense right now. And what's not impressing me right now is Megan Courtney's roll shots on the outside. I'm sure Russ Rose is going to have a little chat with her because the ball has been in her hands a number of times. The set hasn't been perfect, but she's roll shotting and free balling the ball over. So she needs to swing away at balls, especially on transition, if Penn State wants to come out of this first set with a win. Katie Slay looking for that first ball side out, did not get it. Burks with another chance and another kill. Yeah, Illinois is doing exactly what they wanted to do, extend the rallies. They are digging and transitioning and scoring. Take a look at Burks on the outside, going high off the blocker's hand, and that's a big block in front of her. It's a scary block. You see Katie Slate in front of you? It takes courage to swing away like she did. Well, a timeout as Penn State is down by seven. Again, we go to the Twitter question, what is the best rivalry in Big Ten volleyball? Tweet us your answer, and it may be on TV during tonight's match. Mention numerous options. Use that hashtag B1G Volleyball. These teams have played some epic five-set matches in the series, including a 2011 match in University Park, Pennsylvania where it was the Illini when they were ranked number one, winning in five sets, beating Penn State on their home floor, ending a 68-match Big Ten home winning streak for Penn State. And then, of course, in 2010, there was a five-set win for the Illini in this building. And then last year, they played in five as well. That one went to Penn State. That's right. In those earlier matches, of course, Illinois had Ward and Arch outstanding players, all Americans, and so they definitely did a good job for Illinois when they were on the court. We know this Illinois team did not have Barch and Ward last mm -hmm. year, and right. yet they were one point yep. in the fifth set from winning in five sets over Penn State in this building. They just could not finish it out. Yeah, Hamley does not like to talk about that one. I think he still has nightmares about losing that match. That was a disappointing loss for him for sure. Have some answers to the Twitter question of the best rivalry, and you're going to get a lot of answers of Penn State and Nebraska, the two premier programs in the conference. However, with more matches being played between, say, Penn State and Illinois over the years, as Nebraska being a new member of the conference, there have been some more better matches played between Penn State and Illinois, and I'm sure at some point we'll see Nebraska and Penn State play as many as well over the years. Tough serve from the Illini. Penn State out of system and miscommunication for Penn State. The point to Illinois. Well, Hamley has got to be pleased because he's do the, his team is doing exactly what he has asked them to do, and that is be aggressive, especially from the service line. You don't often see Russ Rose up out of his seat. He is a little disturbed right now about how his team is playing. On the overpass, Illinois cannot finish the ball. Burks. Great opportunity, didn't put it down. Boy, that is disappointing because that would have just been exclamation point in this set. I mean, you want to take those overpasses and just pound it down, especially when you have momentum on your side. It was teed up for Jocelyn Burks, and she did not put it into the floor. Kendall Pearson to serve for Penn State. Out of play in the service there in Illinois. Six points from taking set number one. In talking to this Penn State team this year, they feel like communication is one of their strengths, and we haven't seen it here in the first set. No, they're definitely out of sorts. And, uh, you know, Russ Rose, as I said, he was up off the bench. We don't see him doing that, so he is not very animated right now. He is very disappointed at the ball control of his team. And an air on Illinois' side, so Penn State down by just seven. And Penn State can rotate back around, get, say, Micah Hancock maybe back on the service line. They could make a run of it here in the first set. Yeah, and let's talk hitting percentage. You know, 50% right now for Illinois, only 27% for Penn State. So, you know, we're not used to seeing those numbers. Penn State has been number one in hitting percentage in the conference. So numbers are very low for them right now. And another for Maddie Mayers of Illinois, and this is the start that Kevin Hambly wanted to see from the freshman. Well, you know, when she plays well, it, it, things go well because she's important in the offense. You can't just depend on Burks on the left side. So the, the offense has to be balanced, and she is certainly a big part of that. 
Hancock, McClendon out of the back row, and a whistle that goes against Penn State on the illegal attack. Yep, back row attack, her foot crossed the line, and so that is illegal, and that's why the point went to Illinois. Let's take a look at it again. You can see her left foot going over that attack line, and so point. Land inside the 10-foot line, but you have to take off behind Absolutely. it. Yes. And Deja McClendon did not. 21-12 in the first. Line I serving aggressive. Whitney looking for another. And it was a whistle, but the point will go to Penn State either way. Well, this will be a nice test for Penn State. They're down by quite a few here. See if they can chip away at Illinois. And a good test for Illinois. Can they maintain? this tempo of play and get this point here and get a side out. Think back to last night, Michigan State and Minnesota. Minnesota had a big lead in the first set, and that fell away to Michigan State coming back for a win. So Penn State would love to do the same. Paulina Prieto, Sarah May, too long on the serve. You know, I was watching her in warm-up and commented on her aggressive serve. But the bottom line is, is you've got to do it in the match. It doesn't matter what you do in practice. You have to perform and execute in the match. Prieto, Sarah May, a redshirt freshman out of Miami, Florida. An injury last year that kept her out. and Was the first ever Penn State player to enroll early. Another timeout on the floor as Penn State down in the first. 22-13 lead for the Illini. So we'll take a look. Big Ten Conference standings changed after last night with Michigan State falling to Minnesota. So three different teams with one loss. And this tight race will be that way the entire Big Ten Conference season. Yeah, don't blink, because things will change in a heartbeat. <laughs> so, you know, we've got some great matchups tonight. Uh, this weekend will be a test for many teams. Uh, and I, you know, have a feeling that the standings will change. Teams are going to be moving up and down. Top 25 is littered with Big Ten teams. Eight different teams in the top 25 and also in the RPI with so many teams playing difficult schedules, not only in conference play, but out of conference. You see Penn State with an RPI at up at two, but the Illini, 25, they had seven ranked teams on their schedule during the non-conference season, made it difficult to come out of non-conference with a winning record, so they know they have to get some key wins in Big Ten play to make the postseason. Yeah, everybody has been talking about the preseason that Illinois had. And as you said, Mike, hands down, it was the toughest preseason that anybody has seen. So they struggled a little bit. Hopefully those struggles will pay off. Hopefully they learned how to compete, how to be in tight situations. And by the end of the Big Ten season, hopefully they'll get some wins under their belt and be at the tournament. BTN goes where you want, when you want it. With BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live volleyball on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. To learn more, visit btn2go.com. Also available in the App Store and on Google Play. Hancock tries to go over on two, and the whistle against the Illini, and the point as the double touch is called on McMahon, the point to Penn State. So, sorry, Hancock has been successful with that attack, that's her second time. So if you're Illinois, you have to focus on that. If her offense is struggling, we talked about the numbers right now, only 25%, she's going to take control and attack the ball herself. McClendon roll shot pays off as Illinois sent it back over and it hit the antenna. You know, a roll shot, that's just basic ball control in the back court. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to put that ball right up to the center and be in. Volleyball on BTN is brought to you by Tachi Caro. We've got the ball, you bring the game. Great crowd on hand here inside Huff Hall. One of the better student sections you will see in all of the nation, the Spike Squad, out and about on costume night. And you see the attendance numbers. Illinois, fourth in the nation, and State at eighth. And the Illini are on track to set a new attendance record this season if they can keep up the average. The Illinois program continuing to grow and build off that success from 2011 when they went to the national championship match. And a player they love to watch tonight has been Liz McMahon coming up with five kills 
in the first set. The junior on the right side for Illinois. Yeah, she has been having some good rhythm with her setter, Balunas, and it's so important for Illinois that McMahon play well because she helps balance out the attack. Hamley says it cannot be the Burks show tonight. It has to be McMahon, Burks, and a few others contributing offensively in order to beat Penn State. McMahon with five, Burks with four kills. Penn State with a couple of different players with two or three kills. No one really taking over in that first set for Penn State. And that is the only the third first set loss of the season for Penn State. The other two times it happened were against Texas and Michigan State. Their only two losses on the year. Right, and I think the key for Illinois was serving tough. Penn State was really out of rhythm in serve-receive. They got good touches on the ball, and defensively, they just outworked Penn State. Here's McClendon who's stuffed and the night continues for McMahon. Well, McMahon is having a special kind of night so far here. Take a look at this block. She gets up and over. Well done by McMahon. See the answers on Twitter. The hashtag B1G Volleyball. Another stuff for the Illini. Illinois reading Ariel Scott out of the back row perfectly. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm at a loss because usually every time the ball is in Scott's hand, we're used to saying point Penn State. So uh, right now, good touches from uh, Illinois. They're playing great defensively, putting a lot of pressure again from the service line, putting pressure on Penn State's passers. So we'll see if Penn State can rebound here and play a little bit more aggressively. That was one of the keys for them tonight. They'll look to their seniors and Katie Slade, Deja McClendon, and Ariel Scott. Hancock into the net on the service air. That five service airs now for Penn State. You know, and I just, I wonder when she just decides I'm going to take a little bit off and put it in and get into a little bit of a, of a rhythm, you know. Um, so she seems to be blasting it and not missing long, but missing it into the net. Scott goes back to Slay, but into the net again. And Penn State all out of sorts. The Illini on top, 4-1. So if you're Illinois, you got to take advantage of this. Penn State's not playing perfectly. So you got to keep adding the pressure and don't make errors. Make them work for every point. Because when Penn State is in rhythm, boy, they are good. So take advantage of the fact that they're playing sloppy volleyball right now. Not a system for Penn State. But Scott rolls it over from the left side. OK, and that's the type of shot if you're Illinois. You've got to go for transition and get the point. You can't let Penn State win points with roll shots like that. You've got to make them earn. Into the net again. The air now from Deja McClendon. You heard the spike squad, the student section, chanting her name. And it results in a mistake. Rose looks <laughs> thoroughly disgusted right now. This team just not playing well at all. Russ Rose and the staff not happy on last week when they lost, when they beat Wisconsin in straight sets. They're not happy tonight. This time Scott from the right side goes cross court. Deep shot hitting the perimeter of the court, the edges of the court. She's so hard to reach. She's got a lot of different shots, but that one there, there's there's really no answer to that one. It just kisses the sideline. And another service air. They continue to pile up on Penn State. We saw some sloppy volleyball last night between Minnesota and Michigan State combining for a lot of attack errors and service errors and we're seeing some from Penn State to start out this match. Scott tools the block for the point. Well, right now Scott is the only player that is really swinging hard. Mike is feeding her the ball. She's in the backcourt now serving and we'll see if she gets no, she's going to get subbed out. When she gets subbed back in, it's because they need her offensively. Even though she's in the backcourt, she'll still get plenty of sets. Mario Scott has had success against this Illinois team. Career-high 28 kills in that match in 2011. 
Eddie Mayer's looking for another. Gonzalez with a great dig. Chriswell in front of Lacey Fuller for the point. And again, just getting touches on the block, getting good defensive plays in the back row, and then Chriswell just figuring out where to swing the ball to right out of the defensive player's range for Penn State. Three ball over for Penn State. Hancock decides to go to Whitney. The block is there for Illinois. You know, everything just evolves too slow. It's a free ball. It goes right to Hancock. It's a typical one ball. Illinois' block is waiting. You've got to do something different. Look, at Illinois' block is right there waiting. A better shot for Whitney might have been a tip to that left front area. Just a slow running offense right now for Penn State. And the tough serve results in the point for the Illini, and it's all fighting Illini so far. And it's so nice to see Anna Dorn out there for Illinois contributing. You know, she's battled injury, and she's out there probably not at 100%, but certainly giving more than 100% in her effort in blocking. Another timeout for Penn State. Russ Rose with a few words for his team as they're down in the second set. 9-4 lead in the second set for Illinois in front of their home crowd. And moments ago, Russ Rose having a conversation with his setter, as you typically see. But, Audrey, what's the conversation going on there? Well, right now, the numbers for Penn State offensively just are not there. The offense is not being run smoothly. She's not getting great passes. But tough beans. When you're a setter, you take any ball, and you have to deliver good sets to your hitters. You're also the emotional leader out there, and Penn State is flat. It is her job to get the team pumped up and have them compete better here in the second set. Courtney Abrahamovich in to serve for the Illini. Well, high off the block into the rafters. Another chance and another kill for Criswell. You know, good things happen when you keep the ball alive. We saw the DS for Illinois aggressively going after the ball. Take a look at this shot to end the rally right over Micah Hancock in the open spot in middle back. Morton Criswell coming through again for the Illini. There had been discussion about that second outside spot for Illinois. Could it be her or Michelle Strizak, the freshman? And Criswell trying to lock down that position. Lunas goes back to Criswell. And a whistle on a net violation against Penn State. Good defensive play again. That's the difference. It seems like Illinois is frustrating Penn State's hitters. Usually Penn State, their hitters are used to going up, slamming it down. It seems like Illinois is just in the perfect spot to dig those balls up. Hashtag B1G Volleyball if you're on Twitter and watching this match. McClendon who sets it to Courtney. And Balunis with the dump over for the kill. Well, on Megan Courtney's attack, the block slowing it down. That's Anna Dorn. She's got great feet. And you see Valunas on the outside, slowing it down just enough to lead up to that play. Valunas' attack in the front row. We talked earlier about how difficult the schedule was for the Illini during the non-conference season. Kevin Hambly felt like his team showed that they can play with anyone and beat anyone. They're showing it so far tonight. Well, they certainly are. They're competing well. They believe that they can win. And I can't say that, that this team has thought that because of all the losses. So sometimes those losses will get in your head and make you think that you're not very good, but they are certainly showing here tonight that they can compete hard. Think back to the win against Michigan on the road for this Illinois team. They had lost six of seven at that point, desperately needed a victory, got some confidence, and it wasn't a great match, but Kevin Hambly said sometimes you have to win when you're not playing at your best. They had not done that recently until that Michigan match. Chriswell again and another kill. Five on six swings for Chriswell. 
Well, what an opportunity Valunas gave her to score because she jump set and she held the block. Take a look there. Number 12, Hancock, goes up with her and leaves a one-on-one one -one opportunity for her outside hitter. So nice set by Valunas. Another long run for Illinois. Clendon off that first pass with the attack. Bump set to the senior. McClendon went for that back corner. Ball will not get over, though, and the point to Penn State. And McClendon taking a bad set, doing something positive with it. It was a good aggressive move by Illinois to try and play the ball up. Sometimes placing shots in the open court will help you get a point, as McClendon did on that play. Grant looking for an ace for Penn State. Why not able to keep it alive? McMahon again from the left, and that has worked out well for Liz McMahon. Right, and she had Slay in front of her. Slay's hands were not over the net. They were high. Take a look at this second block by Slay. They were over but not high enough, and so McMahon tools her and gets the point. Point to Penn State. Kevin Hambly seen his team doubling up the Nittany Lions here in the second set. Illini won the first set 25 to 19, had a large lead in that one as well. They're able to hold on and get the win. They want to go into the locker room with a 2 0 lead at intermission. Beltran will set to Burks. And off the block, the kill for Burks. And that's key, because Hancock was back there serving, and you certainly didn't want her to get into a rhythm. So that point for Illinois was a big point. McClendon on the right side gets the kill. It's Dominique Gonzalez for Penn State, the libero, with a perfect pass. Allows the setter to do a lot of different things. She chooses to go to McClendon on the right side. Nice kill by Deja. The chance for McMahon this time puts it well out of play. A mistake there mm -hmm. by McMahon, but Kevin Hamley came in talking about balance. The reason they moved McMahon to the right side was to get more balance, and they're showing it tonight. Put together a confidence team, confident team with balance, and they're going to be a threat. Yeah, and you're seeing more and more in women's volleyball. You need to have a strong right side attacker. You know, certainly Penn State has Scott on the right side. McMahon is developing into a huge right side attacker for Illinois. Burks going down the line. Three ball chance for Illinois. Too much from Scott, no touch. And 16th point of the second set for the Illini. Errors at the moment, eight attack errors for Penn State, but that goes along with seven service errors. Good coverage by Beltran, but Valunas couldn't get it over. <laughs> she really wanted to slam that ball down a little too aggressively, and it's good to see her laughing that off. That shows confidence. And that's the one thing in her development. She is no longer the freshman setter out there. She is a sophomore setter who's really learned the craft of setting. And Hamley is very pleased with what she's been doing so far. Allie Stark will have try to get the long set. It will not go to Burks. It's a free ball. And Scott high off the hands. Yeah, keep feeding Scott. She's got a great gift of going high off the blocker's hands. So if you're Illinois, you've got to dig her angles or 
be ready to make a move deep because her balls will go off the block and out of bounds. So one person should have the real spinning and trying to track those balls down. Not a great first contact by Illinois results in the double touch. Yeah, the ball was passed too tight. And so this is a good timeout by Kevin Hambley to regroup here a little bit. Too many easy points is what they're giving Penn State at this point. State down by four in the second set. They've got Ariel Scott going, though. She's hitting over 300 and has seven kills. Lots of different shots there. You see her splitting the block in between the seam. A roll shot works for her. Everything is going A. Scott's way right now. Again, she's in the backcourt, hitting incredible angles right now for her team. You mentioned Alexis Valunas and kind of her development for this Illinois team as their setter, a sophomore out of LaGrange, Illinois, and Valunas. And she was a player at Lyons Township High School where she played with Jocelyn Burks, but didn't have that connection right away this season that Kevin Ambley was expecting between the two players who've known each other for quite some time. But Valunas has really developed the past few weeks playing some of the best volleyball she's played in her entire career. Right, well you talk about the players playing together uh, when they were in high school and I think setting high school offense is completely different than setting a collegiate offense. So she's got a year under her belt. She's doing a much better job. I think her placement has gotten better. I think she struggles with tight sets. She'll once in a while get called on a double contact. But really, uh, I think her connection with uh, a variety of players has gotten better. So the rhythm of Illinois' offense has gotten better because Valunas has put in time and has gotten more consistent as a setter. Coach Ambley has said that she's beyond the point of just trying to set the ball in the collegiate game. She's now actually running the offense and managing this team, and it's paid off with a better hitting percentage as of late. Hit 256 last weekend, including 387 against Indiana, and currently the Illini hitting 283 in this match. Another chance for Mayers, but the solo stuff for Megan Courtney. Well, Megan Courtney is such a good blocker. Blocking the slide is tough because you're often one on one. Let's take a look at her footwork. She's there, she's up, and I like the way she reaches in. You can see that very forceful movement in the center of the court with her upper body. And Burks off the block. Well, tooling Scott is tough. Because as we've already mentioned, Ariel Scott is 6'4". She puts up a good block. When she reaches over, it's almost impossible to hit around. But if she goes straight up, then you can go after her hands. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Put it up by Beltran off the attack from Courtney. Criswell to the corner. When you talk about a difference maker, Jennifer Beltran with her dig. Not only does she get the ball up, but it goes perfectly to her setter. And then a great hit by Criswell on the left side. Another timeout as Illinois up 18 to 13 in the second set. Join us on Twitter, hashtag B1G Volleyball, twitter.com slash BTN Volleyball. Join in on the conversation. This Illinois team trying to go up 2-0. The only losses for Penn State this season have come in five sets, but the last time that they were swept came in this building, and it was against the Fighting Illini. Yeah, you know, and when we talked to Kevin Hambley, he said he wanted to make this match interesting, and it certainly is turning into a very interesting match. Illinois has dominated in so many categories. I think right now they just keep putting the pressure on Penn State, and I have to say again, the backcourt defense is exceptional right now for Illinois. I think their front row block, that first contact, often slowing the ball down, which makes the backcourt a little bit easier to handle. But Beltran doing a fantastic job of just sacrificing her body to dig up balls in the backcourt. Jennifer Beltran with four digs tonight. She is the new all-time career leader in digs for the University of Illinois. She reached that mark last Saturday night against Indiana. Jennifer Beltran in her career done so much for this Illinois team and a leader that Kevin Hambley has really been impressed with. Not only the growth in her development throughout her career as a player, but what she's done in leadership as well. 
and Jennifer Beltran really showing what she's been able to do this season. Right, and you saw her talking to her coaches on the bench and looking at clipboards. They're talking about hitting angles from the opposing team, where to line up for each player. So she's not confident with the digs that she's had so far. She wants to make sure that she is in the right spot for each player that's swinging on Penn State side of the net. And a bad first contact by Penn State. The point to the Illini on the ace. Illinois just being aggressive. This is exactly what Hamley wants from his team. And Penn State is off. This is not their night. We're not used to seeing them play with such lack of confidence. A change up bringing in Paulina Prieto, Sarah May, and right away the kill for the soft fresher freshman. Yeah, Paulina is in for Megan Courtney. Courtney was not getting the numbers. She was not being productive on the left side. And with Penn State, boy, they got a deep bench. And Paulina is such a great offensive player. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what she can do offensively for Penn State. Prieto Sarame hit 18 kills against Texas earlier this season. Chance for Criswell on the overpass. Hancock was there. Swing from Hancock. Set to Nia Grant down the line. Nia Grant back in, getting a positive swing for a team that slide develops very quickly. And she hammers the ball down. That was a key play for Penn State. Chance again for Prieto Sarame, the up from Beltran. Griswell into the block and down for Penn State. You can see Paulina Prieto Sarame saying, let's go to her teammates. Yep, she is a fireball out there. That's one thing that I've heard about her, and she's certainly showing her spark right now for Penn State. A 19 to 16 lead in the second set, but Prieto Sarame trying to get the Nittany Lions going. This week on BTN.com, don't miss any exciting action. Check out our upcoming volleyball schedule or go to video.btn.com. A couple more top 25 matchups on video.btn.com. You can see this Penn State team play Northwestern on Sunday and then see the Illini host Ohio State. As these two teams on a weekend that getting close to the midpoint of the Big Ten season, knowing how crucial these wins are. Illinois up by three, trying to go up 2-0, but Penn State clawing back. Criswell with the tip. Prieto Sarah May gets the touch call on the point to Penn State. Yeah, she could be the difference maker for Penn State. She has been itching to get on the court, and now that she's on, she's making the most of it, getting crucial kills here. Take a look at this aggressive swing. Nice and high, way over top of the block. Not much of a touch there from what I could see. She got lucky on that one. The yeah, Grant off the slide, and Penn State down by one. You know, sometimes what you need to do is not start a player. And you can see how aggressively they play when they get a chance to play. So Nia Grant did not start. She got the nod here, got subbed in, and she's doing outstanding so far. This was once a eight-point lead for the Illini, and now we're tied. All right, this is the Penn State that we're used to seeing. In system, playing aggressively. You see a nice swing by Hancock. Take a look at that dig in the backcourt, and no one is on Hancock, so Illinois' block a little disorganized on that play. 6-0 run for Penn State, but Criswell ends it. Take a look at Hamley. He, it's not a timeout. He just grabbed his team, put him on the sideline, sent a message that this is our set. I like that in a coach. Kevin Hamley wants to fight. He's shown the fight before for his team. He wants his team out there being competitive. Trying to close out this second set. Grant, another chance doesn't go. Rito Sarah May rolls it over. And you mentioned the fire that she brings to the floor. Deja McClendon has said that she's a shining star who gets everybody pumped up. That's right, and she is crafty. Look at that shot. And then again, it's that emotion that 
Penn State needs right now. They need the kills from her, but they need her spirit and determination. She's going to get subbed out. She's got a nice jump topspin serve, but we saw her miss a few. So serving specialist will come in. Ball knotted up at 20 in the second set. One for Hancock to get to, and the whistle on the net violation against Illinois. Anna Dorn in the net trying to block Micah Hancock a little too aggressively, and so that point does not go Illinois' way. Penn State now with the lead in the second set. Back to Criswell on the stuff. Mia Grant coming through for Penn State. Yeah, take a look at this block. Perfectly formed. It was Hancock's hand that reached over. There was no line shot at all, and that's exactly where Criswell was going, down the line. It was sealed up. Mia Grant's excitement made it think that she had had the block, but there is the block for Penn State in the middle. There are two points from the second set. Well, we talk about how important the first contact is, and right now for Penn State, the first contact is the block. They are shutting down Illinois, and Penn State is known for being a great blocking team. They're number one in blocks per set in the conference. So they're putting on a clinic right now. They need to maintain a good blocking game here in the second set. Had to turn it around after a sluggish start. Tip from Criswell. Bump set to McClendon, the senior. Another chance for Criswell and a huge kill for the Illini. Now that was a key kill. Let's take a look at it again. Nice deep shot. She's keeping her Illinois team in this one. Take a look at how she leaps. And again, she finds the outside of the block and goes for it. So no touch on the block. It was a clear shot cross court deep in the corner. Criswell now with nine kills to lead all players so far in this match. The is back serving for Illinois. Mia Grant goes off the block, and the Illini can't keep it back in play. It's set point for Penn State. Well, Grant has been a difference maker as well. She got a kill there, but she's been very aggressive on the block. So again, she did not start. Now she got the nod. She got subbed in, and she is really doing a good job for Penn State here in the second set. Three kills and four blocks now in the match for Nia Grant as she will head back to serve. Saw her come up with an ace last week against Minnesota, so she can serve tough from the line for Penn State. This time on the right for Criswell, and she gets it to fall. She's having a pretty special night tonight. And I'll tell you what I like. I like when hitters go up strong when the game is on the line. That could have been a point for Penn State had she not gone up aggressively. So I like to see that kind of spirit and determination in a player. Ariel Scott checking back in for Penn State. Danielle Davis to serve for Illinois. Freshman in the key spot. Courtney receives. Slay ends the second set, and we're tied at one. And the key was a great pass that time by Megan Courtney. Hancock had all kinds of options. Went to her big hitter, Katie Slay, for the kill. Penn State comes back from an eight-point deficit and heads to the intermission tied at one set apiece. We'll be back to Huff Hall in a moment. One of the best freshman centers to one of the best senior liberos we've ever seen in Big Ten Conference women's volleyball, Jennifer Beltran for this Illinois team, came in and started her career known as Jennifer Bonilla, but then changed her name after her freshman season to honor Gustavo Beltran, her kindergarten teacher who helped her along in her volleyball career, eventually taking her in, both Gustavo Beltran and his wife, and doing so much for Jennifer Beltran, and here she is as the all-time career digs leader for this Illinois program. Yeah, her story is amazing. She has overcome so much in life and is 
spectacular young lady. She's a great leader for her team. Really knows what it's like to work hard to attain goals. And this young lady is certainly the highlight of Illinois' team. She visited this Illinois program and saw Ashley Ettinger, her counterpart before as a libero, break the all-time record. And after that match, former Illinois head coach Don Harden in the locker room said that Ashley Ettinger had set a new standard and a player might come along someday and break that record and actually smiled at Jennifer Beltran. In the end, she was the one who would break the record. Start of set three in the first point for Penn State. Well, Penn State insists and the kill goes to Deja McClendon on the left side. It's important to see who the starters are. We're going to keep track, see if Nia Grant is in. Right now, Slay is in the front row, so when she rotates to the back, we'll see if Nia Grant comes in. Back over to McClendon on the tip, and Balunas can't get there. Nia Grant is in. She's actually serving right now, number seven. So her efforts in the second set give her the nod to start in the third. Man back on the right side. Block ready for it from Penn State. Burks through the block of the Nittany Lions. So Burks had Slay in front of her. And this is what you got to like and respect about Burks. She goes up strong every time. She is fearless. Nice dig there by the back row. And then she takes advantage of Slay's hands, wipes off the ball, and gets a point for her team. We haven't talked as much about Jocelyn Burks so far in this match. Seven kills for her, but we've seen so much more from Criswell. McClendon down the line. Davis can't get to it on the dive. McClendon takes a little bit off. It's not the most powerful shot, but it's a well-placed shot. You can see that there's a lot of line available between the outside blocker stands and the antenna. That was a great camera angle there to see just how much line was available to Deja McClendon. Well out on the service air. Uh, Micah Hancock has not gotten the rhythm from the service line tonight. Mentioned Deja McClendon, and earlier this year after Penn State lost to Michigan State, McClendon and the other seniors took the team aside and said, this is not something that happens at Penn State. Losing leads like they had in the first and second set against Michigan State, the players who came before them would not have dropped those matches, according to Deja McClendon and the seniors, and they're trying to show they're not going to drop this one. Yeah, and you got to like that when your team takes control of a situation. You don't always want to hear it from the coach when those seniors have that serious talk and grab the group and really try to refocus. you got to be pleased as a coach because that shows true leadership. McClendon off to a good start here in the third set. Asia McClendon, a three-time All-American last year against Illinois in two matches. She had 26 kills and hit 290, including the match-winning kill in that fifth set to get the win at 18-16 on a tip to the back corner. Usually, as you said, Audrey, you like the big swings, but it was a win <laughs> on a tip. 5-2 Lee, make it 6-2, and the air's now coming from Illinois. Yeah, Balunas with a couple double contact errors, so her hands really kind of loose, and ball's not coming out of her hands clean, so the ref is blowing the whistle on her. Into the net on the service air, number nine now for Penn State. Penn State now hitting over 300. Just nine attack errors, but they did start off slowly, and those attack errors and the service errors also costly. Hancock back to Slay. Overpass created. Valunas almost had the stuff of Slay. Criswell through the block and down. <laughs> well, she has been the shining star, hasn't she? She is getting the job done. Good scrappy play on both sides of the net. You see a non-setter touching the ball, putting it in good position for the left side hitter. We call that a five and five set, five feet off from the net and five feet in from the sideline. Morgan Criswell aggressively going after that one and swinging hard. Back to Slay. Mayers too much as she goes cross court. 
And that is an error you don't want. Katie Slate from Penn State set the ball over the net. That's a free ball. You got to score on free balls because you're never going to get easy balls like that. Well, you don't get them very often. So swinging and, and, and hitting the ball out of bounds is really unacceptable. Works out of the back row. She terminates. Jocelyn Burks, sixth in the Big Ten in kills per set this season. Burks, a redshirt sophomore out of Willow Springs, Illinois. Kevin Hambley has said that he has never had a player as talented as Jocelyn Burks. Well, and that says a lot because he has had some amazing talent. We talked about Ward and Barch. So for him to give that sort of a compliment, boy, that's huge. So the entire Penn State bench come up, except for Russ Rose on that <laughs> block. And Penn State winning the battle of the blocks now. It's 17 blocks to four and a half for Illinois. You mentioned, Audrey, Penn State leads the Big Ten in blocks per set, ninth in the nation, 2.87 per set coming in. Back over to Criswell. Hancock with the swing. Prieto, Sarah May with the kill. Well, Paulina, number nine for Penn State, has gotten the nod. She swings well. There's that fire. Lots of talk. She hasn't quit talking. <laughs> You see Prieto Sarah May in there in the spot usually of Megan Courtney and the player up from the bench cheering more than anyone is Megan Courtney after that last kill for Prieto Sarah May. Well, you know, and that's that's having good team chemistry. Paulina certainly has worked hard and now that she's gotten a nod, you want the best for your team and really the goal is is to win and sometimes it's going to be a different mix on different nights sometimes you have an off night. So if Paulina can carry the load for Penn State on the left side, so be it. Dorn tried to get it over, but Hancock was there to win it. Well, Hancock's in the front row right now, so she can certainly block. She does a good job of turning as the ball is crossing over the net. And there you see a nice stuff block by Micah Hancock. Man back on that left side, tools off the hands. Well, Illinois is sticking with it. They are doing a good job of siding out. Man doing a very aggressive swing on the left side. We'll see her block on the right side. We'll see Paulina rotating to the backcourt, number nine for Penn State. So she's off. Freshman Danielle Davis out of Bloomington, Illinois, serving again for the Illini, down by three. Here's Nia Grant, and she started to feel it after not getting the start in this match. Well, and the difference really is in passing at this point. Nia Grant is getting the credit here, but take a look at where the pass is. It's right on Micah Hancock's forehead, so you can only set slides if that ball is pushed to the net. The setter's able to do whatever they want, and Hancock's setting a perfect slide attack. Over to Burks. Can't dig that ball up in the kill to Burks. Wow, what a swing. So much power behind it. You know, she's just a sophomore, so what a promising career she is going to have. You wonder if her arm is going to last, because she certainly gets a ton of attempts for Illinois. Kevin Hambley said they've been managing her time in practice, not having too many swings, because they want to make sure she is at her best in matches. Such a good start. The quiet sense. Hancock saw an opening but did not catch the line. Boy, she just missed the court. That would have been a great shot. Just went slightly wide. Micah Hancock, the 2012 Big Ten Setter of the Year and reigning Big Ten Setter of the Week. Seen her grow a lot in her game throughout her career as a setter. Always been fantastic from the service line, but what changes have you seen in her job as this Penn State setter? Well, I saw her grow after Russ Rose chewed her out. <laughs> so I think, you know, what I have seen from her, she came in as a great athlete, still is an exceptional athlete. 
but what she did as a freshman was just put the ball up. She just set the ball. Now she's starting to understand how to run an offense. So Micah Hancock doing a better job of understanding the position and executing her role on the court. That time, though, Illinois knew where she was going with the ball and had the block of Katie Slay. One point deficit here for the Illini. Back to Ariel Scott. And missed time there between the freshman Katie Static and Alexis Volunich. Well, it wasn't a bad idea. Volunis wanted to set a fast offense. Static just not able to get the timing right. So it went off of her fingertips, had some backspin to it, never even crossed the plane of the net. McMahon passed the block for Illinois. So right now, Illinois has two attackers pin to pin. Liz McMahon getting it done. Again, going over top of Deja McClendon's block there. Being 6'6 certainly helps. Having decent jumping ability on top of that is going to certainly help. So Liz McMahon, an exceptional athlete for Illinois. And McClendon, an exceptional athlete on the other side of the net for Penn State. Yeah, you, you got to be able to block hip to hip against Deja, force her to hit a shot. When the block is so far apart, there's a gaping hole in the block, she will just rip it, and there's no way the backcourt can defend against that. So the only way the backcourt's going to have a chance to dig balls is if Illinois has a well-placed block. Illinois took the first set 25-19. Penn State in the second 25-22. A 12-3 run to close out the second set. Penn State on top in the third. Here is Katie Static. And the decision that did touch the line, the point to the freshman. See, good pass up to Volunis, setting a slide attack. Katie Static getting involved in the offense. She doesn't have to get big numbers, but she has to contribute a little bit just to keep the block on Penn State's side honest. You want them leaning to her as she runs the slide, perhaps not being able to stack on the left side against Illinois' left side attackers. A dig by Criswell. She gets the chance on the attack. To Sarah May in the up from Beltran. Was well off the block. Penn State can't save it. And Illinois has tied it up at 13. Well, Beltran was in the perfect spot to dig up Paulina Prieto Sarame. It's almost like there's an X on the court and she knew exactly where the ball was gonna go. So as a left side hitter, we talk about having range. If you hit the first ball to left back, hit the second ball somewhere else so the backcourt defense doesn't get into a rhythm as Beltran did in that play. Middle to Slay terminates. Hancock, I like the way she's changing it up. Sets one to the outside in transition, sets one to middle, keeps the block for Penn State honest. There you see a classic 31, which is a quick tempo set pushed away from the setter, and Katie Slay is up and ready, so she's jumping as the setter is touching the ball. Chriswell into the block. Ariel Scott and Nia Grant combined for Penn State. 15 to 13 lead for the Nittany Lions in the third, but the Illini aren't going anywhere. Huff Hall on an October evening where the costumes and all the fans are out to see this Illini team try to pull off the upset. And Illinois has shown that they can battle with the number four team in the nation, currently down by two, but they are tied and one set apiece between Penn State and Illinois. Yeah, it is a defensive battle. We saw Beltran make some key digs, and both of these teams are hungry to get this third set. Penn State has not lost a third set this entire season. Static with another kill for Illinois. And what should be a fairly easy dig 
goes off of Hancock's arms. It wasn't the hardest hit and she was in good position. You've got to change your platform if, you're, if the ball is outside your body. Angle that right shoulder down to keep the ball in play. Hancock to Grant and the stuff for Illinois and Balunas. Well, the block has served both teams very well. This time it goes in Illinois' favor. They read the 31 perfectly. I like how Valunas is starting in, respecting that Nia Grant can get killed, so she helps out with that middle attack. Back over to Scott and too much. Scott again looking for a touch, but nowhere near the hands of the Illini. And you see Hambly up off the bench encouraging his team. He likes the fight that he's seeing right now. Wants them to serve aggressively and again, make sure you know your blocking responsibilities and backcourt defense play well around a well-formed block. Back over to Scott, another kill for her and she's been quiet in the third set. Now eight kills total on the match. Now let's take a look at it again. She just has like a two-step approach here. Bang, bang, and then up quick off the ground. She likes that cross-court shot. The thing is, is she's got every shot. We've seen it. We've seen her hit high off the blocker's hands. The best thing you can do is go hip to hip if you're the blocking on the blocking side and make her hit a shot around a well-formed block. You don't want to give her any, any open seams to hit through. Criswell tools the Penn State block for Illinois. 14 kills for her. Ties a career high, so she's having an exceptional night tonight. She's really been a difference maker. We're used to talking about Burks, but boy, she's having a fantastic night tonight. How to play just barely as Penn State lets it go. Tied again at 17. I mentioned how Kevin Hamble have been looking for a player to lock down that second outside spot. Morgan Criswell with her play in this match. Also the play she had against Purdue. Making a bid to be that long-term starter. McMahon off the block. Well, I think Criswell has earned that starting spot. And McMahon doing a really good job. Again, she, when she rotates to left front, she'll swing. She seems to always get the set. So if you're Penn State, maybe you cheat a little bit. Force Valunas to go somewhere else because McMahon has scored a lot from that left side position. Now McMahon back on the right. Clendon too much and now up to 14 attack errors for Penn State. So this is what's frustrating about Penn State, and I'm sure Russ Rose would be the first to say it. You see them play exceptionally well, and then you see two, three, four points where they just play a different sort of game. Too many unforced errors. Seeing Deja roll shot the ball long is really unlike her. So that's been the frustrating thing with Penn State this year, is just maintaining consistent, tough play throughout a set. If you look at the numbers on Penn State, just three errors in the first set, six in the second, the set which they did win, and five so far here in the third. And when those errors pile up, add in the service errors, nine that Penn State has. So at the moment, you can say they've given away 23 points. <laughs> yeah, and in this environment, you just can't do that. You've got to play at the top of your game. It is so hard to walk into an opposing team's gym and take a match away from them. So right now, Illinois has got the, the fans behind them. You can see that they're cheering and they are up on their feet. They want Illinois to get this third set. Well, Penn State is 58 and 10 in Big Ten play since 2010. Eight of those 10 losses have come on the road in environments like this one. Spike squad always animated. <laughs> You have to be impressed not only with what they do here in Huff Hall, but the only student section that travels is the Spike Squad and Penn State. Great home atmosphere for them, but not making the road trip the student section for the Nittany Lions, but a relatively new form student section. Either way, it makes for a great atmosphere throughout all the Big Ten. 
on the bench, you saw Anna Dorn talking to her coach about her blocking responsibilities. What they do is they keep stats and they track where, uh, who's getting the set in certain rotations. So Dorn should be ready for this attack. But the air out of the timeout by Nia Grant in Illinois. Five points from taking the third set. And what makes Anna Dorn so good? I think she's got great feet. She's got great read on the ball. She's patient and she's really good at pressing at the point of attack. Her form is exceptional on the block. Can't help but forget that Anna Dorn performance from 2011. Right. She had a career high 13 blocks against Penn State in that match. That tied an Illini record. Hancock had to try to put it over off the bad pass. McClendon. Another chance for McMahon to her former club teammate Courtney in the back row. Burks off the block. Extending rallies has been the key for Illinois. Digging, getting touches on the block, and then just having Chriswell clean up and terminate. Burks now in double figures with 10 kills. Beltran will set Burks. And just long, the Illini fans not happy with the call. Yeah, we, we oh, I'm sorry, they thought that there was a touch on it. Burks hoping for a touch. Obviously didn't get one on that play. McMahon tips, tries to go into the block. And the point to Penn State. Here's what you hate to see is, are these, again, I keep saying it, unforced errors, hitting errors, tipping errors. If you can just get good swings on the ball and force Penn State to make a dig on it. But when you give them these types of points late in the set, it's really trouble for your team. Service error number 10 for Penn State. This was an issue earlier in the season for the Nittany Lions. And Russ Rose not happy giving away those points as Illinois, three points from taking a third. You almost feel like he's thinking about what drill am I going to do in practice <laughs> next week to just kick butt here because he does not like the up and down play of his team. McClendon sees the space on the right side of the court and gets it to fall. Well, that's what you need from your All-American. Take a look at a good shot here. Nice jump set, hitting deep into the corner. There's nobody on defense playing that deep. And so she gets a crucial point for her team. Burks and the stuff. Slay and Scott for Penn State. So when you're going up against that type of block, you've got to hit high. You can't hit low angle, which is exactly what Burks did on that play. See the block numbers improve now to Penn State. Ten blocks for the Nittany Lions in this match. We're going to take a look at just Katie Slay's ability to get up. That was such a high reach for her, so tough block to hit around. Big Ten with so many quality teams. Even the teams that are unranked can beat anyone on any given night, including these Illini who are receiving votes at the moment. Big Ten with eight teams in the top 25, as you see Penn State at the top of that list. For the moment, number four, Michigan State losing. That will change as well, but Nebraska and Minnesota in the top 10. Big Ten Conference set a new record this year with nine teams at one point in the top 25. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And, you know, every single night we talk about this, you've got to play well. Take a look at that. Eight Big Ten teams. Five from the Pac-12, three from the SEC, ACC getting three. So nothing like the Big Ten. This conference in the nation and some of the premier atmospheres that you will find, one of them here in Huff Hall is Illinois. Watching Penn State get back within one. Five centers between these two teams. We've seen them throughout the past few years. Five center here in this building in 2012. One in University Park that went to Illinois in 2011, and then that one back in 2010 that ended Penn State's 65-match Big Ten winning streak. Mine, I have been streak busters of Penn State over the past few years. 
Burks with a big swing. Well, that's key. You know, at this point of the match, you don't want to have careless plays. You want plays like this, aggressive. You want to play clean. You want to make sure that you're taking control of the ball, which is, is exactly what Burks did on that swing. McMahon will head back to serve for the Illini, staying in. Overpass almost created, but Katie Slay able to get it off the one-handed set. Well, a nice job by Micah Hancock to keep the ball in play. Let's take a look at this. This all happened very fast. The ball was going over the net. She ended up saving it, pushing it back to Katie Slay, and Katie Slay being up there ready for the kill. Twenty-three, twenty-two lead for Illinois in the third. The whistle that goes against the Illini on the double touch, and we're tied in the third set. Well, Valuna struggles with the ball that's passed tight. It is a difficult ball, but you've got to have tight hands, and you want to try and push the ball away from the net. It's a difficult set to make, but one that Valuna should be able to make. Penn State has not lost a third set all season. They're getting a little bit of help to get this one tied at 23. Kevin Hamley talking with his young setter. These are the moments where you look to some of the players who are stars or who want to step up. And we mentioned before, Liz McMahon wants to take the critical swings throughout the match. We may see her get the ball here when we come out of this timeout. Yeah, this is where training is so important. You want to believe that you've been in these situations before, whether in practice or in other matches, and you've come out on top. So it's not magic. You can't just flip on a switch. You have to be put in these situations, and you have to have responded positively. So both teams have been in these tight situations. Both have responded. So what does it come down to? You have to play clean. You've got to be aggressive. You know, Mike, I hate the tips and the roll shots. <laughs> I want to see people swinging aggressively to win the point. Don't give your opponent easy balls. No tipping if you're coached by Audrey Flo. No. Right after volleyball, it's a special encore presentation of BTN's award-winning original series. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey Big Ten Football 2013 presented by Best Buy tonight right after volleyball on BTN. State and Illinois, another tight affair between these two Big Ten rivals as we come down to the close of the third set. And for Penn State, they have a huge block. Katie Slay and Scott. So where is Valunas going to go to? Her big hitter is on the left side. We'll see if they can score. Wow. Not only a service error, but well past the line. And Illinois has set point. about playing perfect. At this point, you have to. You cannot make errors, and that's exactly what Penn State did, a silly error. Illini are trying to go up 2-1 to one in this match. Another timeout by Penn State. Russ Rose cannot be happy with the errors that have now added up to 11 service errors for Penn State. And a team that comes in with a lot of expectations this year, reaching the national semifinal a year ago. Everyone is back for Penn State. So they feel like they should be able to make a run at another Big Ten title. And the discussion continues to be about another national title. Right, and, and that's what's so surprising is when we see this up and down play from this veteran team. You know, there's something that is not working. And, you know, you can have the best players but you have to, it's not always about having the best players, it's about having the right players and the chemistry. And you know, the what we're seeing, you know, this up and down play just frustrates Russ Rose so much. He has seen each and every one of these kids individually play very well. They really haven't strung together a perfect match, which is what he hopes to see here pretty soon. And stay, we'll see if they can tie up the third set, send it to extra points. Play this one out. Illinois does not like to be an extra points in this building against Penn State. Losing in the fifth, 18 to 16 last year. See if the Illini can finish it out with Burke serving. Right, and you've got Ariel Scott in the front row, and that's been the go-to player for Penn State. We'll see if she gets the set. 
The set goes to Slay, and we're tied at 24. And that's a great person to, to set as well. Slay hits aggressively. It was a good pass to Hancock, which allowed Slay to get involved in the action. Katie Slay rotates out. Nine kills now for her. Katie Slay has been one of the motivators for this Penn State team. At the end of the fifth set against Purdue, she looked everyone in the eyes and said, we're going to take this match. Right now, she's out of play on the bench, but has tied this thing up. And it's important to note that Megan Courtney is now in the left front position. Hancock saves it, but Illinois with another chance. Static goes after Hancock again. Riswell off the block, the whistle, and then that violation gives Illinois another set point. Well, the ball was set tight to Morgan Criswell, so good job by her to get her feet to the ball and take an attack, an aggressive swing on it. And Penn State was reaching for the block and just touched the net. And so that crucial 25th point goes Illinois' way. Illinois will keep in the freshman middle. Katie Static to serve. Hancock one-handed, and it'll be a free ball chance. Can Illinois end the third set? They go to Criswell. Scott off the block. Prieto Sarame into the block of Illinois. McClendon with the effort. The rally goes on. Criswell down the line. Net violation anyway, and Illinois takes the third. Well, Criswell with the kill, but also some key touches on the right side. She has been able to get touches on Ariel Scott's attack, which really has slowed things down, making it possible for the backcourt defense to play the ball. Talk about defense and hustle, though. Look at Deja McClendon saving that ball, but it's a free ball that goes Illinois' way. And then that shot to end it. Look at Illinois' team. <laughs> it's nice to see them so happy. The Illini on top, two sets to one, and trying to pull off the upset at home. We'll be back with a fourth set on BTN. Illinois on top of number four, Penn State trying to pull off the upset, and they have gotten the effort from Morgan Criswell, the Illini on that left side with a huge night. Yeah, you know, 16 kills so far. The question is, is can she maintain this pace? She has been exceptional. And I'll tell you what she's doing a good job at doing. In the third set, she's able to get some touches and slow down Ariel Scott for Penn State's attack. So that has been key. She's getting her hands up, getting good touches, backcourt being able to play those balls and then transition and score. So Illinois with Penn State pushing these Nittany Lions back against the wall. See if Penn State can respond in the fourth, send it to another five set match in the Big Ten. Seen so many throughout this year. But Illinois is hoping they can close it out here in the fourth at home and get another upset win over Penn State. Slay on the tip, it falls. Playing against Katie Slay, you expect those big time swings, and so you're back playing a perimeter defense. And what she does really well, she's got some good hang time. She can see where the defense is and just put a little touch shot over the block. Another double figure night for Katie Slay, coming off that Big Ten Player of the Week award. She tied a career high with 16 against Minnesota last Wednesday. Hancock serving, this time she doesn't go with the jump, but it's an ace. <laughs> so that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, she's going with the jump, top spin. Now she goes with the jump float, and it scores. So sometimes you just have to go with what's working. Take something off of your game a little bit. Just put the ball in play. Force the other team to play the ball, and that's what Hancock does with the serve. We saw this last year where Micah Hancock did switch to the jump float instead of that high jump serve on the top spin. So jump float again after that ace. Here's McMahon on the right side. 
block for Penn State was split. McMahon has done a good job of getting her feet to the ball, and I think the key is that Valunas is putting the ball in the perfect spot. You know, McMahon doesn't do well when the ball is set inside, so when it's pushed to that sideline, she does a nice job of swinging and scoring. Another tip from Penn State, Illinois ready this time. Burks with the swing, diving effort from Megan Courtney. Block is there this time on McMahon. Overpass and Slay able to finish it off. Careless play by Illinois. You want to put the ball high somewhere on your side of the net. Definitely not on top of the net. Good defensive effort here. And the freshman puts the ball right in Katie Slay's hands. That's a wrong player to give the ball to <laughs> at the net. Burks from the 10-foot line with her 12th kill. Lots of top spin on that ball, which makes it drop. Yeah, not her most powerful shot, but this is what makes her an exceptional player. Jocelyn Burks knows when to take a little heat off of it, put more top spin on it, and place the ball. Burks named to the All Big Ten freshman team last year and a preseason All Big Ten pick this year. And the receiving air, we've seen a couple now as Illinois has gone after Deja McClendon. Yeah, and that's a the part of Deja's game that has improved, but she still struggles a little bit with it. So when she has an off match, boy, teams will pick on her. They will notice that weakness in her game. Why not go after her again? And Katie Slay, Penn State has found something that's working in Katie Slay. They're going to keep going back to it. Yeah, Deja delivers a great pass that time. Hancock setting up a one ball. And Katie Slay doesn't necessarily have to hit the ball so hard. It's just that she's hitting over top of Illinois' block. Allie Stark as Illinois' out of system is called for the double touch. It's one of those errors that I think is completely unacceptable. I think at this level, everybody should be able to grab a ball and set it to the outside hitter. I think you just got to be able to contribute that way. Take any ball, make it a good set. So setter or not, you should be able to Absolutely. get that ball over. Static in the middle for Illinois. Well, that's a surprise. We haven't really seen her go up and swing that aggressively. So Valunas having confidence in the freshman and setting her back quick. Katie Static now with three kills. And you see the substitution taking the place of Maddie Mayers. A little bit more offense from Katie Static as we've seen with Mayers struggling. Right, and what Mears brings is a better block. What Static br brings is better offense. So it really depends on what Hambly is needing and what he's looking for. We'll see if Static can get some good touches on the ball. After volleyball, the journey, Big Ten Football 2013, after this match, Criswell to improve on a career night. And McClendon out of the back row off the block. Hambly's not pleased about something. He is off the bench. Look at Deja's kill here. An aggressive swing. And what I like is the ball was not set perfectly to her. She moved her feet so that the ball was over her right shoulder. That's key. You don't want to reach over your head for the ball and expect to be able to swing aggressively. That ball's got to be over your right shoulder. Good job by Deja to move her feet. Tenth kill for McClendon, her fifth double-double now of the season. Also has those 10 digs. There's an air from Criswell. No, they're going to say that the touch call goes to Illinois. Pauline is fighting. That's her feisty nature. See Russ questioning Rose questioning as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discussion going on. Both coaches. Not happy in this sequence here in the last few points. Well, Hamley's smiling, so obviously it went in his favor. A grant from Hancock. Well, it seems like the, the sets that go behind Hancock are scoring. That one trickled off the net for Nia Grant, but nonetheless, the ball is being moved around by Micah Hancock. She's doing a good job of getting her hitters involved. 
Another service error, though, from Penn State. The number continues to climb. Now an 8-6 lead in the fourth. Illinois took set number one, 25-19. It was Penn State coming back in the second set to tie it up 25-22 in the intermission. And then a deuce set, third set win for Illinois. Made it a 2-1 lead as we sit in the fourth. Ian Grant again. Balls behind the setter are working perfectly. Mia Grant getting up quickly, fast feet to the ball, scores for her team. Keep on using the hashtag B1G Volleyball as we watch this match unfold on BTN. Grant now back serving. Creates the overpass, and we saw that happen to Illinois before. Now Penn State can't put down an overpass. It's disappointing. That should be a kill from the senior. She realizes it's a mistake. What I know about this kid is she comes back strong, so Deja McClendon wants this ball to make up for that error. Three ball chance for Penn State. It goes back to McClendon. She does not, as it's another attack error on Penn State. Well, I bet Illinois will serve her. Deja's made a couple errors. We'll see if the ball goes to her. She's calling for it. Hancock decides to go to Slay, who tips. Hancock with the big swing. Courtney out of the back row. Davis will bump set, and it'll just be a free ball that Beltran sends over. And Slay out of play, and a series of errors have tied up the fourth at nine. Well, and a series of good defensive gets by Illinois. Again, frustrating Penn State. The defense for Illinois is scrappy. They're keeping the ball in play. Take a look at that dig. And then other digs throughout that rally kept Illinois in play. Courtney out of the back row. And McClendon goes off the hands of Alunis. Well, McClendon needed a positive play. If she made another error, I would question whether or not Rose would keep her in. He's got a lot of confidence in her, allows her some range. She's made a few errors, but has rebounded nicely with that kill. Hancock still using the jump float. in the back row for Illinois. Man doesn't even jump on that ball, sends it over. Courtney just gets a hand on it to keep it alive, but it's sent over the net. And they're going to say it went off Illinois and out of play. Well, Megan Courtney with some great defensive plays in the backcourt. She's digging balls nicely and then jumping up to save balls that are going deep over her head. But it was Deja McClendon saving a ball that was so tight. That was a key play by Deja. Boy, out of system. It'll be Slay who sets to McClendon. And McClendon tools the block. Penn State on a bit of a positive swing here. Illinois is going to call the timeout to slow them down and see if they can get their footing back here. They need a good side out play to get within reach. 12 9 lead for Penn State in the fourth, and some great play on both sides of the net as we continue to battle at Huff Hall. Penn State leads it in the fourth set, but they're down in the match as Illinois is up two to one in sets. Take a look at some of the leaders for both teams as we sit in the fourth set between Illinois and Penn State. Morgan Criswell for Illinois, 17 kills, 406, a career night for her. And then McClendon and Slay combining for 12 each, the two seniors. Yeah, and the question is, can Criswell keep this pace if she can? 
this will be an exceptional night for her. So she doesn't play in the backcourt, so she's allowed to rest for three rotations and then has to come on strong for three when she gets in the front. Burks with the air and out of play, and Burks as well as McMahon and Criswell all in double figures for the Illini. Either way, Illinois has gotten the balance that they want, but Penn State on a run here with Micah Hancock serving. It's not the typical serve that we've seen from Hancock. She's gotten away from that top spin. She's just doing a floater. Right back to Burks, the up by Gonzalez. Too much from McClendon and no touch. So as an outside hitter, you're going to get back-to-back -back sets. The key is can you transition and get that deep approach the second time. When you only have a shortened approach, a two-step approach, you don't have that power behind your swing. So when Deja got that second set, her approach was not deep enough to get a big swing on the ball. For Beltran with the service there, and you see a couple of seniors on both sides of the net making costly mistakes. Now back to volleyball, the journey, Big Ten football 2013. Check in on those errors, and 20 attack errors for Illinois, 19 for Penn State, 12 service errors for Penn State, and six for Illinois. Yeah, that's a lot of service errors for Penn State. We talk about serving aggressively, but 12 in, in you know, just three and a half sets. It seems like a lot to me. McMahon with her 11th kill. And Kevin Hamley said if they can get Liz McMahon and Jocelyn Burks going, they're going to be in great shape. Well, throw in Morgan Criswell as well. <laughs> and you have very good shape for Illinois as that's why they have this lead here in the fourth set. Well, it's nice as a setter for Volunis to have options to go to. And if all you're doing is setting left side, it becomes a boring game and a very predictable game. So she has some weapons that she can go to, and uh, it's a good thing for her that she does. First kill of the night for Megan Courtney. 13 attacks for her, and she finally gets the kill. Courtney, the Big Ten freshman of the year last season. Player that will not sneak up on teams this year, according to Steve Ayer, the assistant coach of Penn State. And Burks with the air on the other side. So now a 16 to 11 lead in the fourth. Now, right now, Burks has to come on strong. Illinois needs to string together couple points here so that momentum goes back to their side and Burks is just the kid to do it on the left for them. Dumped over by Valunas for the point. Very deceptive. She goes up, jump sets, both hands are up, and she hasn't attacked the ball in a while. So Penn State's kind of asleep on her. And you see her jump setting. You see the middle blocker already taking off to block Burks. Big open shot for Valunas. Scott, we have not heard from her in a while, but the kill for Ariel Scott. Well, we hear the thump of her hit. That was hand to floor very quickly. Ariel Scott right back over the bench as she rotates around. You know, the thing about Scott, she is a spectacular player, but animated, she is not. She's just business as usual. She'll get spectacular kills, and then her face doesn't show any sort of expression. Look at the expression after that block, though. Megan Courtney is animated for this Penn State team. Another solo block for her. And you see she's got two solo blocks in this match. She had two in that fifth set a year ago against Illinois force that comeback. And the point, another to Criswell. Well, and what Courtney does well is she doesn't go all the way out with the hitter. She lets the ball come back into her. So very disciplined type of blocker Megan Courtney is on the left side for Penn State. Clipping the net for the ace, Courtney Abrahamovich for the Illini. Well, getting lucky on that one. Those score, they're so hard to pick up. Just rolling over top of the net, so that was a lucky shot for Illinois. 13th ace of the season for Courtney Abrahamovich. 
fourth ace of the match for Illinois. And Mia Grant behind Hancock with another kill. She's been so successful going behind. She, we don't see her going in front very often, but we've seen her score a lot going behind Hancock. Kristen Kelsey. Michigan State, the setter for the Spartans, who we will see on Sunday, talking about her sister, McKenna, who's on this Illini team. Swing from Hancock, and the setter attack for Penn State has them within five of sending it to the fifth set. And a timeout for the Illini. This Illinois team is down by six, going to try to mount a comeback here in the fourth, but Penn State especially with the play of Nia Grant, looking more like themselves again here in the fourth. Well, and Nia Grant can become an option when the pass is there. So you talk about, you know, having her as an option, you know, that's made possible by good passes. Nia Grant, seven kills, hitting 385 with six blocks. Another solid performance by her, but she did have an off weekend this past week. Not her strong moments against Wisconsin and as well as Minnesota. And Jocelyn Burks getting stretched out right now here in the fourth. Long match between these two teams and Burks. Yeah, she, pain. yeah she looks like she's in a lot of pain. Seems like her back, possibly pain going down her leg. This is not a good sign. <laughs> We talked about it earlier. She jumps up and gets back in the huddle. So she appears ready to go back in for Illinois. But Kevin Hambly said they're going to manage her time, to try to make sure that they keep her fresh and not give her too many swings in practice. But a long match like this, where she has 37 attacks so right. far, can get to a play. Well, of course it can. And you know, the thing about it is, is if you have any sort of nagging injury, boy, that is hard to play through that. So her grit and determination is certainly evident here. As she's playing through some, some pain that she's obviously feeling in her back. Most teams at this point in the year, just about the midway point of the overall season, dealing with some nagging injuries and health issues. Megan Courtney clips the net on the serve. Free ball chance. Back to Grant. Clendon can't put down the overpass. Another chance for Nia Grant, and she is firing on all cylinders. Take a look at this nice high contact by Micah Hancock on that back set. She jump sets and then grabs the ball at such a high point and moves the ball around very quickly. Clendon goes down the line. Penn State three points from sending it to a fifth set. Well, Penn State has definitely elevated their level of play, serving aggressively. Ah! Until that moment, just <laughs> as you Lord. jinxed them, Audrey. I must have jinxed them. Megan Courtney into the net on the service air. See the numbers on Deja McClendon. Does so many things well for this Penn State team, and the numbers in kills not as high as they were in her freshman year, but she does so much else defensively, as we've talked about tonight, to make a difference for Penn State. Right back to Grant and another kill. Well, Grant has been unstoppable. Right now, the block is not getting good touches on her swings, and the backcourt is literally ducking to get out of the way. So that is not a good sign. Luckily for Illinois, she has rotated to the backcourt. 23-15. Mia Grant serving, trying to get Penn State into the fifth set. McClendon down in front of Burks, and it's set point for the Nittany Lions. Well, it's nice to see Deja be able to rebound after making a couple errors. That's what true champions are made of. She's in the front court. So is Katie Slay. Katie Slay's been key offensively. We'll see who Hancock goes to. Griswell the tip down, and we're going five again in the Big Ten. Unbelievable. Slay dominating at the net. That hang time and that height of hers, so important in getting that point for her team. 25 to 15 win in the fourth, and Penn State and Illinois will play another five-set match in Champaign.
About to begin set number five in Huff Hall. The spike squad is ready. Penn State takes set four after falling behind two to one. And we will play another fifth set in the Big Ten Conference. It has become commonplace, Audrey. All these teams in the Big Ten's playing in five sets. 13 of 39 Big Ten matches have gone to five at 33%. You know, it, it's an unbelievable stat, and it just goes to show you that you have got to bring your A game every single night. Here is what I am anticipating. Hancock, if they, I don't know if they won the coin toss here in the fifth, but is she going to do her jump top spin or is it going to be her float? You know, she hasn't been successful with that jump top spin. The float has been. So we'll see what happens and we'll see who won the coin toss, who gets to serve first, and what kind of serve we see from Hancock. Penn State playing in another five set match. Three of their last four have gone to five. And you saw the numbers. Penn State two and two. They're only two losses on the year coming in five sets. Illinois three and one in five set matches this season. Penn State beat Minnesota in five last Wednesday. They only had three errors in set five in that match. Beat Purdue on the road with zero errors in the fifth set. Their two losses, they had four and six errors in the fifth. So keep an eye on those errors. And as you said, on the serve of Micah Hancock. Race to 15 at Huff Hall between Penn State and Illinois. It's the jump float from Hancock. McMahon with the first kill of the fifth. Well, that jump float serve was handled very easily by Illinois. Perfect pass right up to the setter. Again, the placement of the set is right where Liz McMahon needs it, and she delivers a kill. Liz McMahon wants to take the critical swings for Illinois, and she does to start the fifth. Hancock to McClendon, and Katie Slay puts it away. Illinois' middle blocker lost track of the ball. She was looking around in circles trying to find it. Katie Slay cleans it up. Let's take a look at this again. She's circling around, doesn't know where the ball is. Katie Slay's like, here it is. I'll put it in your face. <laughs> it's Burks into the Penn State block of Slay. All right, so we already talked about how big Slay is. When you get the ball, you've got to put it, when you get the ball offensively, you've got to put it somewhere other than right in Slay's hands. You've got to go high off the hands or hit angle. Right in the belly of that 6-6 six, six block is not where you want the ball. And the whistle on Valunas, and Penn State up 3-1 to one now in the fifth. Gotta hate when your setter gets called on double contacts. Gotta get your feet to the ball, get strong hands. That's a set she makes a million times. So it's unfortunate that here in this fifth set she made a double contact error. The service error gives it right back in the air from McClendon on the service line. 3-2 in the fifth set. Now, Illinois talked about not serving Dominique Gonzalez. She is a great passer. So from Illinois, the serving strategy has to be serving someone else other than Gonzalez. Holly Stark will serve at McClendon. Ariel Scott is roofed. Number 12 for Illinois, Katie Static doing a good job of getting her feet there and reaching over the net. That is key. If you can stop Ariel Scott, boy, you have a great chance of beating Penn State. That is not even the strength of her game as she comes up with the big block, but an error gives Penn State back the lead. And in for Penn State is number seven, Mia Grant, who's been very effective behind Micah Hancock. I think Grant has been the key to Penn State, especially winning that set where she came in. Remember, she didn't start this match, so she's done a great job. Air, air, air. Got to hit those. Static yeah. did keep it in. Yeah. She keeps it in, ah. and they're all shot over, and we're tied at four. Okay, I thought that ball was a hitting air. So did the Penn State bench. But tied at four, and Katie Static, the freshman, stepping up in the fifth.
Scott. Block continuing to sit on Ariel Scott. Criswell off the block for Illinois. And Chris, Criswell using Nia Grant's hand that time. She's playing with such confidence tonight. Take a look at the ball that's set slightly inside. It wasn't a perfect set. And Penn State's block did not move their feet. And she used the block to get a point. 5-4 lead for Illinois in the fifth. These two teams are playing a five-set match for the fourth consecutive year. Journey coming up after the conclusion of this one. Scott, the up by Burks. And State continues to go to Ariel Scott on the right. This time she gets the kill. Yeah, a nice little roll shot by Scott scores. It's important to notice that Russ Rose has inserted number nine, Paulina Prieto Cerame on the left side. And now she's getting subbed out. Megan Courtney back in. Penn State five and one in Big Ten play. Illinois three and three. The Illini desperate to get wins to make sure they can go after a postseason bid. Try to get over 500 in conference play. Here's Criswell off the tape. Another swing for Criswell, the up from Lacey Fuller. Static into the Penn State block. Another good rally going here. Off the block for Criswell. Um, Illinois doing exactly what got them into this fifth set, getting touches on the block. They know it's going to go outside. Penn State's block does, but a poorly formed block allows Criswell the opportunity to use that block. We're going to see a substitution again. Megan Courtney is out. Paulina Prieto Cerame is in. Megan Courtney could not get kills on that rally. Lots of touches from Illinois off her swings. Nia Grant and Penn State with the kill from Grant ties it at six. Well, that has been one of the things that has worked for Penn State, that Nia Grant slide approach. But the only way Hancock can set her is if the ball is pushed up past that 10-foot line. But look to Nia Grant to get a lot of swings here in the tail end of this fifth set. Change again as Prieto Cerme will come out. Kendall Pierce will serve the sophomore for Penn State. Tied up at six in the fifth. Out of play on the air. Tough to come off the bench and serve like Kendall Pierce just did, and she missed the line. So Illinois with a one-point lead. You know what? I, that's your job. You, you know, when you're a serving specialist, it is your job to come in and serve. And she has a serving target. And when that is what your role is in the fifth set, you've got to be able to deliver. Disappointing error here again by Illinois. Another service error. We saw the service errors for both teams. Far too many for the likes of either of these coaches. Mia Grant's chance to serve for Penn State. The ace comes for Nia Grant on miscommunication by the Illini. Well, as we say, it comes down to serving and passing, as we can clearly see here in the uh, tail end of this fifth set. Penn State leads by one in the fifth at 8-7. The conference of five setters continues as Penn State and Illinois in the fifth here in Champaign, an 8-7 lead for Penn State over the Illini. We take a look at the Big Ten standings. And Illinois can move above 500, get to four and three. Penn State wants to stay atop the standings, could move into that tie with Michigan State at six and one. Well, and so importantly for Illinois, it would be a huge boost of confidence to beat the number, the fourth ranked team in the nation. You know, Penn State is a great team and has a great reputation. So Illinois, a team that's been somewhat fragile, if they can get a win here tonight, boy, they sure can turn the corner and their season can take a positive turn. And I go to Chris 
Criswell, 20 kills for Morgan Criswell. And on the right side, great shot. Slay was there, and she did not hit the ball right into the belly of the block, hitting a good shot. Now she's in the backcourt. She gets time to rest her legs. Pressure here on Penn State to side out and get a point. Up the service air. State didn't have to do anything to get the ball back. lead for Penn State in the fifth. Last year in this building, it was a 14-10 lead for Illinois before Penn State came back and won it 18-16. And another service error on the Nittany Lions. Kevin Hambly and Russ Rose have become well familiar with these five set matches between these two teams. McClendon is stuffed. Well, that is a huge block. Great momentum builder. Take a look at swing blocking technique. It's all number seven, Burks, on that left side. Timeout for Penn State as they're down by one. I look back at this match, and Illinois won 25 to 19 in the first. Penn State came back from down eight as Illinois looked like they were going to go up 2-0 on Penn State. And the Illini won the third, 26-24, and Penn State dominant in the fourth, 25-15. Currently at 10-9, this crowd wants to see an Illini upset. Well, it's been a great effort from Illinois, and I really believe the blocking and defense has really helped. The service errors are so disappointing at crucial times. Again, I just think it's not that hard to go back on the end line and serve a tough serve. And I, I, I just don't know if that was a strength that I had. But, you know, <laughs> I relished in serving. There, there's no variables. It's you and the ball. If you practice hard enough, you should be able to put in a tough serve at a crucial time. And both teams showing that they miss at crucial times, and it's just so frustrating to watch. Coming up the journey, Big Ten Football 2013 at the conclusion of this fifth set. Penn State won the five-set battle last year in this building. It was Illinois in 2011, winning in five sets at Rec Hall. And in 2010, the Illini won in five here at Huff Hall to end Penn State's 65-match Big Ten winning streak. So Illinois is hoping to make some more history tonight by beating Penn State. Hitting the Lions, just down by one. Penn State looks to Scott, and despite the effort by the Illini, it's the point to Penn State. Penn State struggled with that pass. That was a bump set all the way to the outside, but it's the talent, the athleticism of Ace Scott. She gets a key point for her team. Race to five, and out of system are the Illini. Doesn't get over, and the point to Penn State, four away from taking the match. Well, the roll shot just didn't have enough roll to it. It has to go up over top of Katie Slay, so you've got to make sure that that ball goes over top, and a poor error there by Illinois. Audrey, how big a difference does it make here in the fifth set to have a veteran team like Penn State with the seniors that have been around, played in a lot of big matches, versus a team that's a little bit more inexperienced in Illinois? Well, it's key, but what I think is key right now is who's playing front row. You've got Katie Slay, who is a huge block. And now for Illinois, you've got Burks. So Burks has to choose her shots wisely. She is a great offensive player for Illinois. She's on the left side. Look to her to get the ball. But she cannot just go low angle because Slay will eat her up. So she's got to choose her shots wisely. 13 blocks for Penn State in this match. Eight and a half for Illinois. Look at the block numbers. Katie Slay with four. And six for Nia Grant on the other side. Jocelyn Burks with four blocks. And Adorn with five. So we'll see how it plays out at the net, whether or not a block could decide this fifth set. 
Well, Lunas is talking to her outside hitter, Burks, trying to keep her loose, making sure she delivers a good set to her. But of course, it all depends on the pass. You've got to be able to set different hitters. And so being predictable is probably not what you want to do. However, Burks has shown success on the left side all season long. Pass to Valunas. They go to Katie Stack. Well, gutsy set. Again, I just said that you don't want to be predictable. You've got to be risky. So good job by Katie Static to get up and go. You saw Katie Slay there for Penn State number 16 leaning, and she did not expect Static to get the set. So it was a gutsy set by Valunas and a, the right set at that moment. Already seen one deuce set in this match in the third when Illinois won 26 24. We could be on our way to another in the fifth. Service air by the Illini and Allie Stark. There's just not much to say. You know, you, you've got to be able to put the ball in play, pick your target, and it's an error that I think is completely unacceptable. Uh, both teams need to work on their service game. Both coaches need to address this issue. Gonzalez clips the net. Overpass created in the kill for Megan Courtney. So you see a service error by Illinois, a passing error by Illinois, and right now the game, the set, is really in Penn State's hands. Timeout for Illinois as Penn State is two points from taking the fifth. about these five set matches and the teams that can pull away and be tough, mentally tough in the fifth set are the ones that are going to be atop the Big Ten standings at the end of the year. Yeah, you've got to be able to close these ones out. So what do you do? Exactly what you said, Mike. You've got to be mentally tough. You've got to want the ball, whether it is in serve-receive, whether it is in attacking. You've got to have enough confidence that you can deliver and do your little job on the court. So there's no time to want the ball to go to someone else. You've got to want the ball to come to you. Who's the player for both teams that you expect to say that right now in the huddle? Well, I, I would think, you know, the key hitters right now for Illinois are Burks. Uh, you know, she's got to want the ball. She's delivered for her team all season long, and there you see her fist pumping, and uh, or that's Balunas, but uh, there you see Burks and Balunas talking. This is a crucial side out for them. For Penn State, boy, you'd like to see a Scott in the front row taking control, Katie Slay. Any one of those players really has the ability to do that. These are all Americans we're talking about. So Penn State is loaded. Any one of them can get the job done for that team. Is there a personality, though, that stands out that you think there's that player who's saying, get the ball to me? Well, I think Katie Slay has been that player. She loves making the big points. And, uh, you know, she's been calling for the ball a lot tonight. But in the front row right now, you got Nia Grant. Two-point lead for Penn State and two points from taking this match. Gonzalez again serving. Line I go to Katie Static, and the point to Penn State is Courtney was there. Didn't get over the net, four touches, and it's match point. An interesting set selection there. Static did deliver on the one ball attack, but the slide, an error. Ball goes into the net, as you mentioned. Set point. Match point, Penn State. Penn State came back from 14-10 last year. Can Illinois come back from down 14-11? Line I go to Burks and the whistle. That violation, so the Illini down by two. Well, if you're Illinois, you have to play perfect volleyball at this point. There you see the big hitter, A. Scott. She's nodding. She knows that it's her job to put the ball away. We'll see if Hancock puts the ball in her hands. It does go to Scott, and Penn State survives. Penn State is lucky to come out of this one with a win. They did not play flawlessly, but A. Scott delivering that key kill on the right side for her team. Another five-set victory for Penn State, and they're 6-1 in the Big Ten Conference, and a heartbreaker for the Fighting Illini. That will do it from Champaign, where Penn State beats Illinois 3-2 in five sets.